Hello everybody, welcome to today's webcast and thanks so much for joining us. My name is AJ Jones, I'm a member of the DART team who is one of several groups engaged by HAP to provide training and technical assistance to Ryan White HIV AIDS programs recipients and sub-recipients for the RSR. Today's webcast is presented by Ellie Coombs, who's also of the DART team. Ellie will provide you with an overview of progress on data completeness activities. She'll also discuss a shift in outreach activities to focus not just on if you report data, but also what you report. She'll review findings from targeted RSR outreach and strategies that providers have identified. At any time during the presentation, you'll be able to send us questions using the question function on your control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. You'll also be able to ask questions directly live at the end of the presentation. You can do this by clicking on the raise hand button on your control panel, and my colleague Beth will conference you in. You can also click the telephone button, and you'll see a dial-in number and code. We do hope that you consider asking your questions live because we really love hearing voices other than our own. Today's webinar is supported by the DART team, which is comprised of CAI, Mission Analytics, and Apt Associates. The content of today's webinar is that of the presenters and does not necessarily represent the official views of, nor an endorsement by HRSA, HHS, or the US government. So with all of that out of the way, I'll turn things over to our presenter, Ellie. Hi, AJ. Thanks so much for that introduction, and thanks to everyone for joining us today. As AJ noted, today's webinar is about data completeness and quality. So I'm going to start by reviewing why we care about data quality. And as AJ said, I don't just mean if data are complete. We're also looking at what exactly is reported. We want to make sure that the data you report in the RSR reflect your program activities. And then I'll talk about some of the common data quality issues that we encountered through our outreach activities. And then finally, we'll discuss some strategies to address those challenges. And don't worry, if you have questions, we'll have time at the end of the webinar to address them. Also remember that the recording will be available on Target HIV within about a week of the webinar. So you don't need to scramble to write everything down. And then we'll have the five-way compliance slides and the question and answer posted on Target HIV within about two weeks. So let's start by discussing why we care about RSR data quality and completeness. RSR data are used to publicly represent the Ryan White HIV AIDS program. You want your RSR data to reflect the good work that you do because your project officer, and HAB leadership are gonna review RSR data to learn more about the services you provide. It's also essential that Congress, the HIV community, and the public at large receive accurate information about the importance of the program. In addition, good quality data can help you improve quality of care, but poor quality data cannot. If your data don't reflect your actual program activities, you can't use it to improve your performance. So I want to start with some good news. RSR data are incredibly complete. So congratulations on your hard work. Let's take a look at demographic data elements over time. The blue bar represents 2010 completeness rates and the orange bar represents 2018 rates. So without fail, completeness rates have gone up, most notably for health insurance, which increased from just 81% complete in 2010 to 99% complete in 2018. Clinical data completeness has also improved over time. Viral load went from 79% complete in 2010 to 95% complete in 2018. So that is fabulous given viral load is a critical data element for evaluating Ryan White performance. All that said, there's always room for improvement. So some of you out there may still struggle with incomplete data or inaccurate data, which means that your data aren't reflecting your masterpiece of a program. So as I mentioned, you can't assess your program quality with incomplete or inaccurate data. So I wanna dive in a little bit deeper here by looking at some examples. So say you run a performance measure report 
And you see that about 23% of your clients are not virally suppressed. Now this just doesn't look right to you given all the great outreach that you've been doing. When you dig a little deeper, you see that you're actually missing 7% of viral load values due to an import issue from your lab system to your electronic health record system. Once you fix this data quality issue, you know exactly who's not virally suppressed or who hasn't had a recent lab done, and you can target your outreach efforts to those individuals. Let's look at another example that we're seeing a bit in RSR data. Clients who are not prescribed ART but are virally suppressed. So to talk through this issue, I created this matrix. And as you can see here, there are about 74% of clients who are prescribed ART and who are virally suppressed. That's what we want to see. Then we have about 6% of clients who have been prescribed ART, but they're not suppressed. So these clients may be prescribed the drug, but they're just not adherent. Then we've got 10% of clients who are not prescribed the drug and not suppressed. And then finally, we have some clients who are not prescribed the drug, but they are virally suppressed. So this is kind of where we scratch our heads because the data don't really make sense. You've got 20% of your clients not on ART and half are virally suppressed. So once again, this data quality issue is making it hard for you to target your outreach to identify those individuals who need to get on ART and stay adherent. If you dig a little deeper, I'm sure you'll find that it turns out a lot of these clients are actually on ART, but maybe there's some drug mapping issue or some extraction issue that's making it hard for you to report the accurate data. So before I move on, I would like to hand the presentation over to Ruchi, who's gonna launch a poll for you all. So Ruchi, would you like to launch that poll and read through the question and responses? Thanks, Ellie. Um, our first poll question today is, which of the following best describes your agency's most recent RSR submission? Data were not complete. Data were complete, but didn't reflect the care being provided. Data were complete, accurate, and don't need improvements, or I'm not sure. So again, the question so is, we'll give you which of the following best describes your agency's most recent RSR submission? And we have about half of our responses in, so we'll just give it a few more seconds. So it looks like we have 9% of respondents saying that their data were not complete. 24% say that their data were complete but didn't reflect the care being provided. 32% say that their data were complete, accurate, and don't need improvements. And 35% are not sure. Great, thank you so much, Rushi. So it looks like most of you feel confident in the quality of your data, and that's great. That's what we're seeing in the data, but there are quite a few of you who recognize that you're missing data or there's some issue with data quality. So that's why we're here today. So Richie, you wanna go ahead and close the poll and I'll move on in the presentation. So as many of you know, the DART team, we work with recipients and subrecipients providers to improve RSR data quality. And part of that work includes annual targeted outreach. And the purpose of that outreach is to identify data quality issues, troubleshoot the problem, and identify potential solutions, and then finally improve data quality in the next reporting season. We do two rounds of outreach every year. In the first round, we contact recipients with subrecipients with more than 10% missing data for key data elements, including federal poverty level, health insurance status, housing status, viral load, and antiretroviral therapy or ART. For this round, we ask that recipients contact their affected providers or subrecipients, and then follow, us via, follow up with us via email to report on the problem and the solution. And I wanna note here that we do review the comments that you all submit regarding missing data in the RSR web system, 
And if we find that the recipient or the subrecipient provider has provided a sufficient response in that comment, meaning that they've described what the issue is and they have a plan to complete the data moving forward, then we don't require the recipient to respond back to us. For our second round of outreach, we contact providers directly, so we don't first contact the recipient. And then we schedule phone calls. And we really like those calls because we can talk through with the provider the issue and troubleshoot potential solutions. So we conducted this year this more intensive outreach, as we call it, for providers who were missing data for a large share of their clients targeted to viral load and prescribed ART. We also contacted providers who had reported no for ART for a large share of clients. So the data aren't missing, there's a response there, but it's indicating that a large share of clients are actually not on ART. We also contacted providers who had a lot of clients not on ART who were virally suppressed. And then we introduced two new topics this year. We took a closer look at those linkage to care data elements. And we identified providers, contact providers that had some funky trends there. And then finally, there was about a handful of providers who had reported different viral load values for the same client on the same day. So to date, we've conducted about 35 to 40 calls with providers, and we have learned a ton from you all about your issues and your solutions. So with that said, I'm going to talk through some of our findings from this outreach. For the most part, we found that the issues were really related to data quality and not program quality. So in other words, there was a problem with your data, that your data were not reflecting what you're actually doing on the ground. And I would say these data quality issues really fall into two major buckets. So there's the data extraction or mapping bucket, and then the data collection and entry bucket. For those of you who import your data from your EHR into an RSR ready system or a system like TRAX, or maybe you use an RSR ready system that is also an EHR, like eClinical Works, NextGen, or Epic, those of you may face the data extraction mapping issues. For those of you out there who manually enter your data into an RSR ready system, like Careware, then you may face the data collection, data entry issues on the other hand. So let's talk about each of those issues in more detail, starting with data extraction and mapping. So this essentially means that the data are in your system, but you're just having a hard time getting it out in a reportable way. So some of you might be extracting data from a very specific field in your EHR for RSR reporting, but maybe your clinicians and intake staff are not getting the data into that field. Maybe they're putting it into an unstructured notes field. They might be adding really relevant information into free text, but that doesn't help with your data reporting. Another constant struggle I'm sure that many of you deal with are the introduction of new codes for medications and labs. So if you have some kind of a programming code to extract data, you have to make sure that that code is always being updated with any new medication or lab values. We found that this lack of new medications related to ART was one of the primary reasons that folks were missing ART. And then finally, EHRs often capture services very differently than what's reported in the RSR, especially support services. So we did find that services that you're providing are just not showing up in the RSR, or they might be overreported or just reported incorrectly. Okay, so now let's move on to our second category of issues related to data collection and data entry. So quite a few of you indicated through our outreach that you're missing data because you just don't have the data to report. Some recipients report on behalf of dozens of fee-for-service providers, and maybe those providers aren't including key clinical data elements as part of the billing process. Specialty care is another major issue that comes up every year. Specialty care is considered outpatient ambulatory health service, OAHS, but some specialists, like an ophthalmologist, might not have that clinical data to report. In addition, 
demographic data elements are self-reported. So some clients simply don't report some of the required data. And similarly, the collection of the data might not be part of your regular intake process. So for example, maybe you don't collect housing status for clients who are insured and not receiving Ryan White funded services. Now these clients may be eligible for Ryan White and therefore they should be reported in the RSR, but you just don't have the comprehensive set of data for them given they're not actually receiving a funded service. And then finally, some providers just don't have the field in their system. This is common for EHR. So how can you collect it if you don't have that field? And I do wanna note here that in some cases, we found that the data did actually represent the program. So most commonly, we saw lack of art prescription in providers that really dealt with particularly vulnerable or hard to reach populations like people who are homeless or um, transitionally housed. Or maybe clients refuse medication or they switch providers a lot and so a provider doesn't have access to all that clinical information. Now I wanna go a little bit deeper into the linkage to care issue because that's new this year. And the reason why we're focusing on it, as many of you may, may know, is due to HHS's Ending the Epidemic initiative. So given this initiative, HAB is really taking a closer look at these data elements, given the importance of connecting newly diagnosed individuals to, to care as quickly as possible. So first, let's take a look at what the requirements in the RSR actually are. So for new clients at a clinic, the provider should report the year of HIV diagnosis. And providers can define what they mean by new. So Careware, for example, defines a new client as a client that has an enrollment date within the reporting period. And then so for those new clients who have a diagnosis date in the reporting period, providers also need to report the exact date of diagnosis and the first OAHS video uh, visit for HIV care. I'm having a really hard time with that acronym today. So we took a look at these data to see what we found, and we did see some issues. So for example, diagnosis date after the OAHS date, missing data, or the reporting of these data for all clients. Now, we're, we're not as concerned as the over-reporting of these data, but we were kind of scratching our heads about having a diagnosis date after the linkage date. But when we talked to providers, we saw an interesting trend related to linkage to care. With the rapid start of ART, some providers are prescribing ART before the confirmatory test. They report the confirmatory test as the diagnosis date, and so in the RSR, that means that the diagnosis date is after that OAHS visit. So let's just talk through a quick visual. Here's my timeline. Here's that initial diagnosis date. Then the ART is prescribed immediately at that first visit, and then the confirmatory test comes later. Now these are the two dates that are reported in the RSR, and it seems like there's a contradiction in those values. So now I would like to turn it over to Ruchi again, who's gonna launch our second poll to get a sense of what type of data quality issue you may deal with at your site. Thanks, Ellie. Our second poll question is, which of the issues that we just reviewed is your agency trying to address? And this is a select all that apply question, so feel free to select more than one. The first option is data extraction or mapping data collection or data entry, other reasons, and if you have another reason, please chat in your response to us, or you have no data quality issues. Again, the question is, which of the issues that we just reviewed is your agency trying to address? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. So it looks like 35% of you are dealing with data extraction or data mapping issues. 77% are dealing with issues related to data collection or data entry. 
8% have other reasons, and we'll review those that you chatted in, um, and 14% have no data quality issues. Great, thank you so much, Ruchi. So now we're gonna talk through some of the solutions that we've identified through outreach, and hopefully some of these resonate with you all. If not, then please feel free to contact the DART team after we'll show you the slide. We'll show you our contact information and we can troubleshoot your issues further and help you resolve them. So as I noted, we're gonna start now on the solutions. And so what I did was I split these solutions into various steps in the reporting process. Number one is getting prepared. Number two is collecting and monitoring your data throughout the reporting period. Then you generate that XML client-level data file, and then finally you check and fix data for submission. So let's start with that step one, getting prepared. First, you want to be sure you're familiar with the reporting requirements. So you all should be very familiar with these links, hopefully, but if not, here they are. Some great resources for you are the RSR Instruction Manual, the 2019 version is now available on Target HIV. The 2019 RSR Changes document. Through our outreach, we found that quite a few of you were very familiar on top of the 2019 changes, but not all of you were. So take a look, because things have changed quite a bit this year. And then finally, PCN 1602. You'll note that the service categories that are reported in the RSR are not actually described in the manual. So you want to look at PCN 1602 to make sure that you're reporting services correctly. Another way to get started, to get prepared, is to check out the data you submitted last year. Folks don't do this enough, I have to say. Sometimes these issues are re reoccurring, and if you had gone back and identified in the previous year, then you wouldn't get flagged for outreach in the subsequent year. So a reminder that the system is available all year. You can go in at any time and download a PDF of your provider report and the upload completeness report for the client level data. You also want to make sure from the start that you're entering data into the right Place. We had both careware and non-careware users note that they just weren't sure where the information was getting pulled for the RSR. So for careware users, there's a great tool called Location of RSR Client Level Data Elements in Careware. And essentially that serves as a map of the careware fields to the RSR field. Now, this resource has just been updated and I don't think the final version is posted yet on the careware wiki. But if it is, then it would be great if my colleague could chat it out, or we'll make sure we'll send it out to the CareWare Lister when it does become available. And if you are a non-CareWare user, you should still go through this exercise, and you may want to do that by working with your vendor. Contact your EHR, your RSR Ready system, to figure out exactly where you should be inputting data so it gets pulled out correctly in the RSR. And we have a nice little template that we created that's located on Target HIV that allows you to crosswalk RSR fields to fields in your system. Okay, so now to, um, let's see, to improve data, sorry, got a little off there. To improve your data extraction and entry, you also mean, may need to add new data entry screens. We've been having quarterly calls with EHR users of the same EHR, and we have found this is a really, really common strategy that a provider will develop a tailored data entry screen that has additional fields, structure fields that capture that RSR data in a structured way that then allows the provider to get the data out and report in the RSR. Another example is to add checkboxes. So if you find that clinicians are really using their free text fields a lot, then you might wanna just add a checkbox so they can say, yes, the client got the service, or to indicate some kind of descriptor for the client. Okay, so now let's move on to our second step, and that's collecting and monitoring data. If you seem to always get behind on your data entry, then you may wanna consider electronically importing data from one system to another. 
I mean, I essentially say this on every single webinar that I do. It might take more time and money or some time and money up front, but it will pay off in the long run in terms of reduced manual data entry. And you can even do a time study to share with your leadership how you think this could improve um, re um, streamline resources in the long run. Also, a couple of providers we talked to indicated that they simply added or trained new staff to make sure that they're getting all the data entered in time. And I just want to recommend that if you do add a new field or data entry template, it's really important to monitor that data over time. Don't just wait until it's time to submit. Run regular reports at the clinician level to make sure that clinicians and individual intake staff are inputting data correctly. Providing real-time feedback is going to help you fix issues as they happen so you don't have to go back and re-enter a bunch of corrected data before you report the RSR. So another activity that we want you to participate in all year as you're collecting and monitoring data is to collaborate with other recipients. So we did hear back from several recipients, especially in our first round of outreach, that the incomplete data belonged, and I'm doing that in air quotes, to one of their sub-recipients, other recipients. So we want to remind folks that data don't belong to a specific part, and we encourage recipients to work with all of their sub-recipients, other recipients, on strategy to improve data completeness overall. And I put this in that second category because, as I said, this is something that should be happening all year instead of just running the upload completeness report after, some, after it's first uploaded and then recognizing that there's a major data quality issue that might be occurring with your subrecipients, other recipients. Also, a couple of providers indicated that they didn't report certain data elements because their clients got limited services. Now, that is a real warning for us that that provider is inputting or reporting incorrect services. So the RSR and the completeness metrics that we're going over take into account what you're required to report. If your client only received case management, then you're only required to report a small subset of data elements, and those other data elements wouldn't even show up on your UCR. So if you think you have clients who are inappropriately included in the completeness calculation, you should double check the services that you're reporting, and you might need to correct that as you go. I want to take a minute here to talk about a couple of careware strategies, given we know there's a lot of careware users out there. If you don't check off ARV in careware, your clients will not be reported as not being on ART. So your data will look complete, but they just won't be accurate. So some tips on getting that ART data into careware. Medications are listed by brand name in Careware. You don't have to check off every single active ingredient. And if you're confused about how exactly to enter the data, make sure you contact the help desk. If you don't see a medication name in Careware, it's probably due to one of two reasons. You haven't updated your Careware medication file, which is a file you should regularly import into Careware or it's a new medication and it hasn't been added yet. So I do wanna note that you can create a custom name for a medication and make sure that that's mapped to ART. And this could be really helpful for those new medications that aren't in the medication file yet. As you're reviewing your data quality, especially related it's ART, it's good to get a sense of the best way to get data into Careware, whether that's importing data using the provider data import tool or entering data just manually into Careware. Um, and there's a link on this slide that'll talk you through that PDI option if that's something that you're considering. And I do also want to note here that Careware has a function that allows you to share CD4 count, viral load, and ART data across 
multiple providers that are within a networked careware system. So hopefully you can have that feature turned on and that'll help complete some of your data. All right, so now we've been collecting and monitoring our data. It's time to generate that XML file. My tip here is to make sure you have the right version of your system. This is especially critical given the 2019 changes. We get lots of TA requests at the very beginning of the submission window, and it's simply because the provider is just not using the, the right version. So we have a page on Target HIV that lists all the RSR Ready systems, and we just updated it with the build numbers of the 2019 versions. And I would say virtually all of the RSR Ready systems have been updated or they will be updated within the next month or so. And then finally, after you create that file, we want to make sure you check your data and fix any issues before you actually submit. So first tip is to use existing reports within your data management system. Check for missing data, check for a high share of no responses for some of those clinical data elements, and really try to resolve those issues before you upload and submit your file. Careware's client viewer is particularly helpful because it's essentially, it mirrors the UCR, but it's hyperlinked to client records. So you can click on the link and that'll take you to a, a client record of a client who's actually missing that data element. So then you can update the data right then and there. The check your XML feature within the RSR web system will be open as early as next week. And once that opens, you can upload your XML file, you can run the validation and upload completeness report and, and check the, the quality of your data sooner than later. Wanna remind folks that the check your XML feature is not the actual main system. Once the main system opens, you'll need to upload and submit from there. If you wanna learn more about Check Your XML, you can review a recording of a webinar that we did last week um, that goes through all the reports available through it. And now before I close the webinar and talk a little bit about other TA resources, I'm gonna hand it over to Ruchi to launch our last poll. Thanks, Ellie. For our last poll question, uh, we're wondering which statement best describes your agency's technical assistance needs. Um, I have the tools I need to improve data quality. I need additional help. Please contact me. Our data quality is already good, or you're not sure. And which statement best describes your agency's TA needs? You have the tools you need to improve data quality. You need additional help, and if you select this one, someone from the DART team will contact you to follow up. Your data quality is already good, or you're not sure. And I'll just give one more moment for that. So it looks like we have a good amount of responses. I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. It looks like around half of you, 52%, have the tools you need to improve your data quality. 5% said that they need additional help and to please contact them. 14% say that our data is already good. And 29% are not sure. Okay, great. I'm really glad to hear that a lot of you are on the right track. Either you have good data quality or you have the tools you need. And for those that need help, don't worry. The DART team will be reaching out to you very soon. We have plenty of time before the submission deadline to get things sorted out. So Ruchi, if you turn it back over to the presentation, I'll just talk through these TA resources slide and then I'll hand it over to AJ to facilitate our Q&A. So just wanna remind folks that the DART team, we're just one of many organizations that provide TA. We're really your go-to organization if you have if you have technical assistance needs around creating that client level data file, especially in managing your data, data support is a great resource to help you understand reporting requirements and data element definitions. The EHB's Customer Support Center can help you get access to the EHBs and navigate to the RSR web system. And then, as I mentioned before, the Careware Help Desk is your go to resource for any careware 
related questions. And if you want to get on the RSR listserv and you're not already there, then you can use this link to subscribe.